Hi, I'm Deborah Hamilton. Welcome to my podcast, Why Do Pets Matter? Ten years ago, with my iPhone and a script, I recorded the first episode of the Ultimate Pet Resolution Summit, which chatted with experts about conflicts over animals. Our conversations were intimate, honest, and illustrated how disagreements over animals occur and how those disagreements can reshape people's lives and relationships. In November 2019, I started Why Do Pets Matter, a new podcast that continued these informative discussions. I'm so excited to have you here with me, continuing my exploration into a more meaningful conversation about why pets matter to all of us. My guests and I will share ideas, stories, and experiences straight from the heart, unscripted and holistic. From the bravest moments to the most brokenhearted, we will explore how to resolve disagreements over animals differently. One thing I know for sure is I want to have more meaningful conversations that will help all of us unlock that deeply felt human-animal bond that drives the emotions of conflict. Today, we'll speak with Mindy Dutka of Dogs I Meet. She's a professional photographer who helps people take pictures of their dogs for posterity. She also takes pictures of dogs at rescues and shelters, so they are more adoptable. Now let's get started. Hi, it's Deborah Hamilton, and welcome back to Why Do Pets Matter? Today, I am so grateful. I have my friend and colleague, Mindy Dutka, here with us. She's the founder of Dogs I Meet because every dog has a tail. It's a photography business which helps people and businesses and rescues highlight the stories behind each dog in their lives or in their practice. So I'm so grateful she's here. We had a great conversation before coming on. But now, Mindy, thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you. It's my pleasure. I'm honored to be asked. And everyone who's watching on YouTube, you'll see the beautiful dog behind uh, Mindy's head. For those of you who are listening on a podcast, it would behoove you to go to YouTube to see the video because the dog is really beautiful. Uh, Before we start, Mindy, what kind of dog is it? I want to guess, but I'm not going to hazard a guess. That is, I'm pretty sure he's a, I can't remember if he's a golden doodle or a labradoodle. Okay, wonderful. Yep. His name is Kingsley. Mm -hmm. Very handsome. He is Uh, very handsome. uh, So without further ado, Mindy, the question we ask all our guests is, why do pets matter to you? I just, I feel so connected to dogs. I absolutely love dogs. That has been the one constant in my life is the love of a great dog. And sadly, they don't live that long. So it's been the love of several great dogs. Um, and I reached a point in my career, I guess, where I was like, I just want to help dogs. I just want to be involved with dogs, but how could that be a business? How could that be a career? And I just thought and thought and thought and did some research and I came upon some information about dog photographers and literally I was like, oh, that's a thing. I think that's what I'll do <laughs> because I always love photography and I always love dogs. Um, so I spent quite a bit of time searching um, the why and why I wanted to do this business and how I wanted to uh, build it into a brand versus just you know dog photography. And um, what really resonated with me was um, the tagline is because every dog has a tail, T-A-L-E, pun (laughs) intended, uh, um, is that there's a story with every dog. Every dog has many stories, actually. And sometimes it's the dog's story, and sometimes it's the story that the dog brings to the owner or the story that a dog brings to a business as inspiration, um, you know, or the rescues and the old saying of, you know, who rescued who (laughs) in the dog story. So I became, you know, kind of obsessed with that photographs captured the dog's tail. You know, it's really interesting you said that because I'm going to go back just a minute when you said you've had many dogs in your life. I know this is probably true for you. I know it's true for me. Um, I've had many dogs and my life has been shaped over those years because of the impact those dogs and each one had a different personality, even though each was the same breed for me, 
um, they were different. They were so different. And when, when people ask you, well, aren't they the same? I go, no, they're really not. But the thing that often <clears throat> hurts my heart, and I'm sure you've, you've heard of this, if you've seen this, uh, people take incredible pictures of their dogs and you are there to help them take even better pictures. But it sometimes hurts my heart when someone says, this is my last dog. I could never have another dog like this, which is absolutely true. Absolutely. You'll never have another dog like that one. But for me, and likely for you, the adventure of your life with a dog really um, spurs you after the pain is gone to get another one. It does. I just find life is more joyful with a dog. And I've chosen to believe that the dog that you have, I, I mean, I also feel that dogs are so joyful and in the moment because in some way they they understand that life is short and they are very present and there's so many lessons to be learned from dogs and i just recently lost my dog and i firmly believe that she wants me to have another dog because these dogs are sort of like your guardian angels and they, while they were with you and while they're not with you i feel like they're looking out for you and they want you to have someone to love and someone to you know watch over you and I have so to say, it's so it's so incredible you said that because i think that after i lose a dog um there are times when i will think of something uh, that reminds me of them. And of course, you know, I can break down into sobs. Hmm. However, then I start to laugh, not because I'm broken down in sobs, but I, I like to think, is that me thinking of them or them thinking of me letting me know right now, driving down this road where you used to walk with me, where I ran after a squirrel or whatever happened, or even if it isn't a road, it's just a thought that pops into your head that they're there with you. They're letting you know. I love to use the term guardian angel because I truly believe all 25 of the dogs that I've had in my life um, are still here. Uh, it's a very crowded room, um, <laughs> but they're still here and they're guiding the dogs I'm with. I believe that too. I, I'm, I mean, I know it's a little, a little out there, but I think they send you the next dog. But I think it's not out there, especially for you who takes pictures because when, when you take pictures of someone's beloved animal while they're here and maybe in various stages of life, so you take pictures when they're a puppy, you take pictures when they're young teenagers and naughty and then older and not so naughty and then older and doing a little bit less. Um, and then those wonderful pictures you take, you know, when, they're, when, when every day is a blessing um, and you create this ability to keep that vision in our heads as we move forward maybe with another dog, maybe without another dog, but really understanding that that dog had such an impact on our lives. Exactly. And, you know, I think that people even, even more so now with iPhones, they, they, I hate to use the word, but they don't really value the idea of professional photography for, for their dog. It's like, Oh no, we take plenty of pictures. We, we don't, you know, we don't need any professional photos. But myself included, I had a dog from the ages of, um, how old was I, 15 to I was close to 30 when Stanley passed away. And Stanley literally went to college with me. He used to fly back and forth on an airplane and we went off to Arizona together. And I always liked photography and I thought I had so many pictures of him. And sadly, I have, when I go back through, I have three crappy pictures, <laughs> basically, that, that are in focus. And, um, you know, it was really a lesson to me um, about, even though you think you're taking pictures, that it is a worthwhile investment. And I tell my clients, whether it's business or, or, or personal, I promise you, you won't remember how much money you spent but every time you look at one of these photos, you will smile. And it, it really is true. And I have people come back to me all the time, you know, that they're so grateful that they have the photos that, and they're, they're, they're priceless possessions. They truly are. I actually did professional photos of my first show dog. So the first dog I finished with the second dog I bought after she had finished, um, she's an Irish setter. Her name was Quincy. And then, uh, Beaver, who was um, Ramblin' Red Theodore Cleaver, so we called him the Beave. Mm -hmm. um, and I have to tell you that I have those professional pictures that I took 
you know, at a dog show, they both were sitting in front of a matting and they both, and they are just, I can remember the day, I can remember the time. And, and believe me, that was in the eighties. They, that was in the mid eighties. And there they are frozen in time as young dogs. One was a puppy of about seven months old. The other one was probably about four. And it really said to me, wow, you know, it, it makes such a big difference. And a lot of people who listen to this program are um, show dog people. And we get our dogs pictures professionally taken every time we win. Um, so we have those staged pictures. But what I love about the picture behind you and the pictures that you like Likely take, they are in that um, home milieu. You know, they are in in that. Uh, I'm sure they can be taken professionally with the backdrop like I have, but I love when they're taken on the couch or with a toy or whatever it is. And and tell us a little bit more about how you help people take pictures of their dogs so they really depict their dogs. You know, uh, how they live their lives. Well, I spend quite a bit of time. So on, on a private shoot, there's a consult, pre-consult shoot consultation, and there's a questionnaire. Um, and I try to get to know the dog. And whenever possible, I'll even do a, a pre-meeting so that the dog gets used to me. And I spend a good deal of time before I even start photographing, again, with making the dog comfortable with what's happening and um getting across through treats <laughs> that this is going to be fun. Um, and um, I also work with the, um, the humans who have a tendency to get a little stressed if they don't think that their dog is behaving and the dogs well. pick up on that and you they can't pick up it. on that. So I constantly, you know, and, and it is for me. I mean, it really is, is a joy. It's fun. You know, I, I keep repeating, it's fun. There's no, there's no bad dogs. There's no anything, you know, this is, this is fun. And as long as it takes, it takes. Um, and I always go on a dog's time schedule. Um, people are always like, you're so patient, but I don't know. I, I don't even think of it as patience. I just think of it as, as enjoyment watching the dog. So I do, um, I do like to capture the dog in their natural environment um, as opposed to studio. So I'm a natural light photographer. Um, and most of the photographs are outside. Sometimes there'll be some inside with, with the natural light. And depending on the dog, like I'll usually ask, I will recommend locations, um, but I'll ask, what does your dog like to do? Like, do you have a favorite place? Is there something meaningful be between you? Um, so that really, you know, aids in, in capturing it. And over and over, and it's very rewarding. People are like, you captured my dog's personality, um, it, you know? And it's just, it's like this connection I feel that I have with them and it's just letting them be them. And that is so important because what we wanna do is we wanna look at this picture and really see uh, the personality of our pets. I think that when people paint pictures, they go, oh my God, you got his expression. But when you take a photograph, you really do get his expression. Right, exactly. And it's the same thing, you know, with businesses. Um, I'm constantly telling, you know, people use stock photography um, and content is so important and people are so focused on content. But in my opinion, it's the visuals that drive even more than the content because there's just so much coming at us and it's the visuals that capture somebody's attention. And that should come before the content because that's sort of an afterthought of people like, oh, I'll just throw up any old picture. Um, yeah. But it's very important. And what's even more important is, you know, if you go back to the story, if that's, it's important to tell your story, your business, your staff, your, um, your team, you know, your products. Um, it, it's just, it, it's a huge difference. Um, one of my, um, clients and they're they're amazing I, I can't say enough about them they um do um have veterinary it's veterinary emergency group and they have emergency hospitals all over the country um and they have a unique story and they know that and they value that and that's why they bring me in to photograph at all their different locations to tell their story about because they value their staff and they want them to know that and that's what they want on their walls so they want it on their walls for the clients that come in to see their story and they want it so that their staff is surrounded and reminded of what they do you know every day and they can see that 
It's um, so important to appreciate and acknowledge people for doing certain kinds of work. Um, and if it's in the animal realm, having the animal in the picture, I know that the Animal Medical Center had pictures all over when they refurbished um, the place of doctors with pets. And so that's the tale you want to tell. It's the tale with the veterinarian, it's the tale with the groomer, it's the tale with the handler. Those pictures are always the ones that you want up on your website. Um, and not so much the, the staged pictures as we just spoke about, but rather um, those candid ones that you can get only when you have a good photographer taking them. Right. You have to take them on my iPhone, but they usually don't look very good. Yeah, it, it's true. I mean, and, and it's like anything else, you know, yes, you could take pictures, but you could do a lot of things that people choose not to. And, and, you know, I've invested a lot of money in education and a lot of money in, in my equipment, um, you know, that, that people just, they don't have, and it makes, it makes a difference. You know, tell me I, a little bit more about, cause you do an, a lot of donation as well, because you take a lot of pictures of rescues. So you go into the vet practice, you take pictures to reflect the vet practice. Of course, that's probably a paid gig. However, in doing that paid gig, it, it allows you to do a lot of, you know, like me, I get some paid gigs, which pay for me to help rescues and every other place make plans for their pets or help their clients make plans for their pets um, or help resolve conflicts among the people. Because um, if we get the benefit of your expertise, then you can pay it forward. Exactly. And that was really important to me in, in creating my business is, is feeling that I can help dogs. And you know, some people think, well, photography, how does that help dogs? Well, without the photography, this, you know, the story isn't told. So if it's a rescue organization doing great work, um, and I also, I do a lot of um, international work, um, or at least I did until COVID, um, but, you know, and they're these small um, rescue organizations that without photos, nobody knows what they're doing. They are amazing, the work that they're doing. Um, you know, nobody knows the story. I went to Puerto Rico uh, several months after the first hurricane, Maria, to document what was happening um, and to help them create awareness and, and raise money. Also, if you just think of a dog on, on pet finders or something, a good photo literally is the difference between life and death to these dogs, you know? And people don't understand that. They come in and, and the rescue is, is overwhelmed. They're doing all kinds of great things and they're not really thinking of a good photo, you know? So you get this poor scared dog in the corner with a chain around its neck and, you know, and it doesn't resonate with people because it's hard. It's, it's almost like when you stage your house, people need to visualize how that dog is going to be part of their family. And that dog is just like every other dog and it deserves a chance. And it was some unfortunate incident that made it, that it wound up in its circumstance, you know, and a photograph of showing its personality makes all the difference in the world. It's incredible because, you know, we we have rescues, which are fabulous. Some rescues much better than others, but rescues are, are really an important piece. Um, we have uh, breeders who uh, have dogs that they take back and they could probably use your um, expertise as well, because, you know, when you're a responsible breeder, when you, you know, select people to have your purebred dogs, um, when things go wrong, you have to take the dog back and having a great professional photo of that dog um, usually will help find someone who wants that kind of dog. And there it is uh, with, you know, the importance of, as you said, capturing the dog's spirit so you can see it asleep on your couch in your home. Exactly. Or, you know, even I, um, there's a, a rescue by me, they're called Pothic Life Rescue, and they do wonderful work. And I've um, photographed for them when a transport has just arrived. And there's so many elements to that story. There's the truck driver who's driven a zillion hours, you know, to safely transport these dogs from down south up north where they're more valued. There's a, a, a you know, a team of volunteers just waiting to take them off and, and, and process them in. And there's and then there's the dog and those dogs, is, it's like as if they know. And I could show you pictures, you know, like you can see on their face and you can see on the volunteers faces that like they're saying you're safe now. 
you're safe now, I've got you. And the dog of just like, you know, joy. And <laughs> so it, it, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And it's captured at the time because, you know, there's, there's all this, as you said, sometimes dogs are really fearful to have their pictures taken, especially by someone they might not know. Um, and so you put them at ease, whether they're a pet or they're um, a rescue, you put them at ease and you take these pictures, which gives them the opportunity to move to the next level. And we talked at the beginning about how when they become part of our lives, um, taking pictures then reflects an even different picture. Exactly. I exactly. And I mean, the thing about dogs is that they, they truly are the constant in your life. You know, if you're lucky enough to have a dog, you, however many years that you have that dog. And we go, you go through many different transitions, you know, like you got the dog when your kids were young and now your kids are grown or, or so many things, you know, um, you have different jobs, maybe you have different spouses, you have different homes, you have all kinds of things. And there's that dog with its constant love. And, you know, so it's just really important to, to keep a history of that, I think. So tell me a little bit about the tales that they've told you that dogs have come into um, your life, either um, from clients who want you to tell the story of their dog so they can hold on to it, um, or you describe some rescues when they come off the truck. But when people are um, going to decide to take really good pictures of their dogs so they can keep them, like I did with Quincy and Beaver, uh, it, it is a decision they have to make, but it's made from a place of, I really want to capture this. Uh, well, part of what uh, my package includes um, when, I, when I do a private shoot is, is an interview um, to tell their dog's story. And, you know, as I said, there's so many stories you can't in a, in a 15 minute interview, but I try to have a, a series of questions and not always the same because it, it would be boring, you know, because your instinct is to say, well, how did you get the dog? And, you know, do you feel the dog rescued you? Um, there are certain questions that run through it, but each dog, depending on its personality and depending on the owner, has a different story. Um, there was one that I really loved I, and I put them on my website um, and up on my social media. So and they also always have this, you know, this story. Um, there was one recently um, about, um, actually the owner, she was, she's a veterinarian and it was a poodle that had been injured. And I think it was a breeder who really wasn't taking the proper care of the dog, but somehow the dog came to the clinic with the veterinarian and she had recently lost her other dog who was a perfect dog. Um, and this dog, not so much. <laughs> this dog, they're naughty. They're a little naughty. This dog just had a lot of baggage. Yeah. But something about the dog, you know, spoke to her. And anyway, ultimately, um, she they adopted the dog. And you, when you see these photos, I, I have a picture of this dog. And this was a dog that couldn't even walk because it had a broken leg. And she she fixed the dog and, and healed it. And they took it to therapy. Um, is this dog is literally in constant motion and i have a picture of him all fours up in the air with his ears flying you know and they're like that's the dog but this story was for them how different the dogs were as we had talked about it from the one that they had before but also how different they were and how at the time when they had their first dog it was so important for her to have this dog trained and always be perfect but she's different now and, you know, the dog is different because of that. And, um, you know, they just kind of accept the dog for what they are. And, and they love that. And I have to say that, that they're more relaxed. I have to say that it's it's so funny you said that because when I was younger, my dogs had to be really, really well behaved. I could just, you know, whistle or do a look and they'd know what to do. And now um, my youngest, Junie, who's only three, I can whistle and give him a look. And he goes, yeah, when I get around to it. Um, I'll be there, but, but thank you for reminding me I'm supposed to be there, but I'll, 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 I'll be there in a minute. So I think as we age, maybe, um, we get a little more tolerant. We get a little less, um, OCD on training our dogs. Um, and we, I think become, 
uh, even more aware of, as you said at the beginning, uh, their presence in bringing joy to our lives. Instead of us making sure they behave, we really allow them to be the full spirits that they are here on earth. And then when they leave, um, we actually remember their full spirits, the good, the bad, the ugly, um, because that's what made them them. Right. Yeah. My dog, um, I had gotten her when she was a puppy and she was a golden doodle and just, just amazing. But she was beastly. She was so naughty. And I remembered someone, cause golden doodles, they're the wonderful, wonderful, but they have a lot of energy. And, you know, they have to be tired out and they're smart and they have to be stimulated. And um, I remember running into someone that had a dog that looked just like mine. And I said, oh, you know, how old is your dog? And he seems so well behaved. And he said, oh, when she turned two, he became, you know, the dog that he always was meant to be. And right. I always believed that my dog was going to become this amazing dog. And... I went back and I said, when she turns two to my family, you know, she's going to be the best dog ever. So I think the day she turned two, she ate like my $300 cowboy boots and a prescription glasses. I was like, okay, I guess it's not two. <laughs> it wasn't three. But at four, she did become the dog that she, she actually ultimately was a therapy dog. Yeah. Um, and she lived to be almost 16. And I credit all of that energy and spunk that she had that kept her going, you know, for, for so long. And the joie de vivre that you allowed to percolate um, in her youth. You didn't shut it down at two because she was supposed to behave at two. I know with Irish setters, we always say, if you spend six months just guiding them to be good citizens, you know, just giving them the ability to know what's safe for them to do, what's not safe for them to do, because Irish setters um, are the Jerry Maguires of the dog world. Uh, show me the money. What's in it for me? And if there isn't enough in it for me, like I said, Judy looked back and said, I'll be there in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, there wasn't enough in it for him. So when we're talking about the joyfulness that they they bring to our lives and the joyfulness, hopefully they have us choose to do in our lives. I mean, absolutely dogs should behave. You know, breeders should take their dogs back and take good care of their dogs. Rescues should screen their people and give them to good dogs, uh, dog people. Um, we all should work together to make sure the dogs land in the right place and are well cared for. And if they aren't, I know you and I talked before about how this, you know, COVID had everyone rescue dogs and take them in. And a lot of people were really worried about um, the dogs being given back. And there were two articles recently, I have to say, that were just fabulous, which was rescues and shelters starting to teach people what they can do when they go back to work with this dog they've only had for six months and they were home for six months. Right. So that's the kind of thing I think uh, by taking pictures, by telling their tale, um, by recognizing what these dogs bring to our lives, purebred, mixed breed, older, younger, puppy, adult, senior dog. I mean, that's a whole nother uh, group. If um, And I'm sure you've, you've thought of this, and if you haven't done it, we'll have to talk, because I love when senior dogs are adopted by senior people, because if they make a plan and if plans are in place and the rescues keep in touch, those dogs can really bring, you talk about joy, right. they bring joy to the older people who then get out of bed. Right. That's so true, you know, on so many levels. Another thing, um, back to the rescue dog that just never ceases to amaze me. I mean, you know, I have been um, in um, all kinds of places, doesn't matter. And uh, whether it be, um, you know, Mexico, or Puerto Rico, or somewhere, you know, I don't know, Tennessee, or, or, or but I have found that almost all the dogs they are so loving and so trusting despite their situation, despite all that they have been through. You know, I, they eat right out of my hand. They cuddle in and you can see that in, in, in the photographs of, you know, they're so resilient and just so wanting to love. And it's like, you know, if only 
we could spread that more to people. <laughs> so, so stop reading my mind, Mindy, because I was just going to say that I, I was just going to say if we could only be as resilient as people and give everybody the benefit of the doubt and live joyfully, um, just think where we would be right now. So I'm just I am so grateful you've been here. Tell people where they can find you, because I, I, I know the website, but I'd rather you say it. Oh, great. It's, it's dogsimeet.com. I'm also on Instagram, which is at dogs I meet. And I, I'm pretty sure Facebook, you can find me on dogs. I meet also, I had made that a little bit longer, but I'm so grateful you're here because people just don't recognize that these pictures that they can take can capture the animals. And, you know, as a club, um, or as a rescue, as a, as a fundraiser, they can have you come in and take pictures of past dogs, or you can come to a dog show and take pictures of the dogs on the table with their ears up and things. All the things we know are pieces of the puzzle. We, we always get that beautiful finished picture where every hair is in place, but it's really cool to get the pictures when their ears are wrapped for Irish setters so they don't drool all over themselves. You know, that kind of stuff is really um, keen and wonderful. So I wanted to let everyone know that, you know, dogs I meet, my friend Mindy, this is, this is such a wonderful process that you can avail yourself of as my listeners uh, so that you can uh, memorialize that perfect dog in your life and hopefully memorialize many going forward not that we ever want to wish anybody ill but god you know the new adventures are always um looked forward to after re we recover from losing you know the skipper of the old adventure well said well said. Uh, and so, yes. And, you know, I'm always, I, my, always say, let's talk dog. I always like to talk dog. So I'm happy, you know, to just talk to people, whether it's a business and brainstorm how my photography can help them, um, you know, work, how I can partner up with rescues. Um, I'll just tell you quickly, I was just talking to a fellow that's created a really fabulous, um, he's an IT guy and he's, he's helping shelters coordinate transports um because often it's a caravan where, where many people are in it and we were talking about capturing that story and getting you know photographers at different parts of this this journey to to capture that story because without it you just don't get the full effect the full story of, of, of what's happening so i'm always interested in um you know talking with people working with people photographing their dog their business their rescue <laughs> Mindy, thank you so much. I'm going to have you back again. So everyone, this was Mindy Dutka of Dogs I Meet. Every dog has the tail, T-A-L-E. You can... This is Melanie Ditka uh, from Dogs I Meet. Every dog has a tail. Stop, stop, stop. Mindy Dutka. You called me Melanie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is going to have to be cut at the end, so we'll start again. So I thank Mindy Dutka for coming on to Why Pets Matter. Why do pets matter? I can't even say mine right, so let's cut this as well. Thank you, Adam. So thank you, Mindy, for coming on Why Do Pets Matter. I'm so grateful to Dogs I Meet and the tales they tell. T-A-L-E-S, every dog has a tail. Please go to her website, please find her. She's just a wonderful human being. I'm Deborah Hamilton. Thank you for being here for Why Do Pets Matter? And until next time, stay safe. Thank you. The Why Do Pets Matter podcast drops every Thursday and can be found on whichever platform you find your podcast. Subscribe now, invite your friends, and I cannot wait to have you join me in these conversations.